Hi, Allison. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Hi, everyone. I'm Brianna Harfman. I'm with the Integrative Physiology and Health Science Department. So I, like I mentioned when I started, I'm Allison. I'm from the nursing department. And uh, we're just going to talk to you a little bit today about both of our programs and how um, what we have to offer at Alma College. So feel free to ask us any questions that you might have. And while we're kind of waiting on questions, I will kind of give you a little bit of a spiel about um, who I am, why I chose ALMA, and what the Integrative, and Physi or Integrative Physiology and Health Science Department is. Um, like I said, I'm Brian Harfman. I'm actually an alum of ALMA College, besides being a faculty member now. I graduated in 2011 from the department that I currently work in. Um, I decided to come back to ALMA because I loved it so much. I actually knew when I left ALMA College and graduated that I would love to come back, which was kind of interesting because when I first started my education at Alma, I thought I wanted to go into kind of chemistry and math. And then I ended up going into physical therapy and then towards the end of my junior year decided I really want to teach and do research. So kind of had a windy road there for a little bit. And then I was lucky enough to be able to come back and work in the department I'm in now. Um, the Integrative Physiology and Health Science Department is really a department that covers human biology. And so we typically have a lot of individuals who are interested in, in pre-health, um, in exercise physiology, and in going into clinical exercise physiology, um, in fitness. We have a lot of athletes in the department. Um, there are a lot of different things that you can do with an IPHS degree, and I'm happy to answer any questions people might have about what that is, what that means. Um, our department, even though it's one degree, has five different tracks. Those tracks are public health. We have a pre kind of clinical exercise physiology track, um, and we have some students who do that track and can get a physician right out of school with that degree or with that specific emphasis. We have a pre therapy track that really kind of includes our pre occupational therapy, pre physical therapy students. We have a pre medicine track, which is kind of our students who are thinking MD, DO, um, maybe chiropractic, maybe PA. And we have one more, and I should know this off the top of my head. Think of it. Pre-therapy, pre-medicine, clinical exercise physiology, public health. Oh, pre-sports medicine. Yes, pre-sports medicine. So we used to have an athletic training department at Alma College. Um, that has since moved to requiring a master's degree, and we don't currently have uh, graduate programs at ALMA. And so we now have a lot of our students who are interested in that athletic training program and going on into that kind of field doing our pre-sports medicine um, track. And we actually have one of our previous athletic trainers, Phil Andre, who was the director of our athletic training program, now in that pre-sports medicine track. Great, so I can um, step in and tell a little bit about the nursing program. So we are a BSN accredited um, nursing program and we uh, can seat up to 32 students in our program. So one interesting thing about Alma College is um, when you start um, as a freshman, you start with our nursing seminar classes. Um, so you're already on the track to nursing. There is no separate application process for the nursing program. Um, the actual hands-on nursing classes, though, they do start um, at the end of your sophomore year, and then uh, we get into the clinical setting once you're in the um, fall semester of your junior year. Um, so we have a lot of really neat different opportunities that uh, most schools do not provide, um, and so that's kind of one benefit. Um, another thing is only seating 32 students. It's a fairly small program, which does make it nice. Um, for you know, that individual help and connection with the professors. Um, we are accredited by CCNE, which is a governing body of um, most uh, college nursing programs and um, a fairly new program as well. Our first graduating class is in 2015. So we're still you know, working, working everything and trying to make it the best that we possibly can. 
So feel free to ask any questions. If I'm not mistaken, there is a simulation lab for the nursing department, correct? Yes, Over at the yeah, hospital. so thanks for bringing that up. That's actually mainly what I do. Um, so not too far from campus is um, in Michigan Health Gratiot, and um, they have a very big, they turn their old ICU into a simulation lab. So we have eight rooms that are set up just like patient rooms in the hospital that we can go in and um, we can you know, simulate any patient scenarios, any skills with the students. Um, we have lots of um, actual supplies that come down from the floors that are outdated. Um, so we get a lot of uh, really good experience with working with those supplies. And then we also have um, two uh, high fidelity mannequins simulators. One is an adult and one is a, a pediatric um, child. And so, and we also have a, um, not so high fidelity, but we do have a birthing um, simulator as well. And so we run a lot of different uh, patient scenarios with those that um, help engage the students and give them more hands-on experience. Um, spend a lot of time in the clinical simulation lab. That's okay, that's, that's my area. <laughs> <laughs> I see we have a few questions that have come in. Um, I'll take a couple that are on the IPHS department that I see. Um, in terms of how long the program is, it's it you can do it in four years. We have some students that come in and do it three years because they try to fast track their degree and go on to graduate school. And your specific faculty advisor can work with you to finish it in the length of time that you want to finish it in. Someone else asked about research opportunities that there are for students within the IPHS program. We have a lot of research opportunities. We encourage our students to get involved in research. That could be summer research. So Alma College has a program called CORE. That CORE program allows students to pair up with a faculty member and come onto campus for 10 weeks in which they get paid and they get housed on campus and they work on a particular project. And they do a seminar during that time for the other students on campus in which they present the research that they're working on. And a lot of those students go on to write abstracts that they submit to conferences. Sorry, I just got an alert on my phone from the government. <laughs> um, they go on to submit abstracts to conferences. It could be a regional conference in Michigan. It could be a national conference. We've had students go to San Diego and Orlando to the American College of Sports Medicine National Conference and to Experimental Biology National Conference. Um, students are also encouraged to do independent studies. And for an independent study, you can choose whatever topic that you want to study, really a research question that you're interested in. You identify a faculty member, and that faculty member can act as your faculty supervisor and help you carry that project out. And independent studies can do or can be done in any department on campus. We also have students who do senior theses, and senior theses are required actually for students in the IPHS department who want to go on and graduate with honors. And it's very much like an independent study. You come up with an idea with a question that you want to answer. You kind of plan out how you're going to answer that question. What tests, what experiments are you going to carry out to get the answers that you want? You work with a faculty mm -hmm. advisor. You might recruit subjects. You might work with cells in culture in a lab. A lot of my research students do cell culture. And then you collect your data, and you'll present that at Honors Day. And some people go on to submit papers to try to publish as well. So a lot of research opportunities on campus. I think I see a question for nursing. Um, are there spring term or yeah. summer travel opportunities for nursing? Yes, yeah, so that is one of um, the very big perks also about our program. Um, the spring uh, term of your ending your junior year we do a Nursing 360, which is a global community experience. And so we have partnered with an organization called FIMRIC, um, which has uh, health clinics that are located all over the world. Some of the bigger locations that we tend to stick with are Ecuador and Costa Rica. Um, and the students go there for seven to 10 days and they volunteer in these health clinics to get a, a real good aspect on what global community or what global nursing looks like um, outside of the U.S. and then also, um, you know, not just in an inpatient setting. Um, so you stay right there with host families. You really get to see what um, their culture is like along with the care that you provide. Lots of good education um, opportunities, lots of teaching for the community. So that's a really fun perk. 
um, of our spring term. I also saw a question about um, which, where, uh, what hospital our nursing clinicals are at. So a majority of our clinicals are at MidMichigan Health Gratiot, um, which is the hospital very close to campus. Um, not all of our clinicals are there. Um, I would say probably 75% of them are there. We do do a pediatric clinical um, with some local YMCA camps. Um, and then we also do the travel piece. And um, we also do our immersion clinical, which can be at different facilities around the state. Um, you do have to stay in the state for that. And we do have to um, be affiliated with another organization um, with a legal agreement. But um, we can, we sometimes can make arrangements and get students in um, at a place that they're kind of looking to return when they're done with the program to teach. But for the first um, beginning of the program, majority of them are at MidMichigan Health Gratiot. Uh, I'll jump in one more time. I see one about um, during my spring, can I decide on a topic to focus on? Um, yes. So. You can uh, decide, once you come in, um, if you're interested in nursing, usually we recommend that you take the um, nursing seminar classes. Um, and so those are your freshman and sophomore years. And then, um, you know, if, if you wanna pursue them with nursing, then you start with the actual hands-on nursing classes. Um, so you do have some time to decide once you get in there. As far as focusing in which department or area of nursing, um, we kind of, the program goes through all of them. So there isn't a focus on just one. We do med surge, we do peds, we do maternity. Um, we do lots of different ones. So um, then you kind of get a, a wide variety and see what you like. So when you're done with the program, um, you know, you can make that decision of where your interests are. I see a question about which pre-professional pathways does IPHS prepare me for? You can go into a number of different professional pathways with an IPHS degree. Um, we have a lot of students who go physical therapy and go on to graduate school in physical therapy or occupational therapy, and our coursework will prepare you well for those programs. We actually have articulation agreements with different institutions for both physical therapy and occupational therapy. Um, we have an articulation agreement with Central Michigan University in which they hold two spots every single year for Alma College graduates. And those students actually apply through the IPHS department at Alma College. And as long as they meet a 3.4 GPA requirement and the 50 hours of clinical um, observation that they need, we can select their name, submit it to CMU, and they automatically get a spot. We also have an articulation agreement with Washington University, which is a very strong school in occupational therapy. It's a slightly different agreement. So instead of having students that can get a guaranteed spot at WashU, we have a program that is a 3-2. So typically with occupational therapy, you would do your four years at an undergraduate institution and then move on to do a master's degree for two years. But Washington University has agreed to accept some of the Alma College courses for their degree. And Alma College has agreed to accept some of the Washington University courses for the Alma College degree. So you can do three years at Alma College and then go straight to Washington University and do your two years. So you finish the total education for occupational therapy in five years instead of six. Another thing to note is occupational therapy is going to move to requiring a doctorate like PT by the year 2027. And so we've already been in talks with Washington University and they will allow students to make that a 3-3 program if they would like to move on and do the doctorate degree for occupational therapy. So a lot of students go that therapy route. Um, we have a number of students who will do an IPHS degree and then they'll apply to medical school, whether that is a DO program or an MD program. We have a few students each year that decide to go the chiropractic route. So we've had some students go on to Palmer or Sherman for chiropractic school. Um, we, if we have students that would like to get a job right after school instead of going on to graduate school, or maybe they want to get a job and eventually go on to graduate school, but make a little money first or get some experience. Um, we have that exercise, that clinical exercise physiology track, and we've had students do that degree and then go on to get certified for strength and conditioning or go on and work in the clinics doing stress testing or doing EKGs. 
with patients. And we have a lot of alumni who we can connect those students with to get that kind of experience and maybe find some positions for when they're done with Alma College. That public health pathway, um, that is actually a, a pathway that relates a lot to what's going on in the world right now. Um, we have uh, classes in epidemiology, which is the study of how disease has progressed in the past or how things like pandemics occur. And so you could go on and do graduate school in epidemiology. You could maybe do a dual degree with um, healthcare administration in business and go on to have a role in a clinic or a hospital in that public health kind of field. Um, there are government jobs working for the FDA um, coming up with legislation that you can do. There's something called the AAAS which is, a found, or is an organization that you can apply for when you are done with your undergraduate degree that really kind of trains people to work in government roles um, that are related to public health. I know an individual who went on to do a role like that and they went on to public education about nutrition because they were very interested in that kind of public health piece. So there are a lot of different things you can do with that degree and whatever you wanna do, your faculty advisor will help you get there. We'll make sure that we're supporting you and we're figuring out what the steps are for you to take to get that role or that position or get into that graduate program. Yeah, and that's the same thing for nursing as well. Um, you know, we, we pair, you're paired with an advisor right from the nursing department. So, um, you know, we'll help you make sure you're on the right course, taking the right courses. Um, I did see a question about what classes do I need to take my first year for nursing. Um, so, my recommendation would be to make sure you're enrolled in those nursing seminars. Um, and then along with that, it's important before the end of your sophomore year to have completed um, an biology, anatomy, um, physiology, uh, pharmacology, and pathophysiology. So those are the four, um, the four classes that do need to be met um, with a grade requirement to enter the program. Um, so those are the, you know, those are classes you'd want to take and then meeting with your advisor, we could get you in some of those other distributives that are needed um, at the college and then for the program. Um, I did see another question about do students complete multiple nursing clinicals? Um, yes, they do. Um, in two semesters, you'll take two at the same time. So our med surge one also takes um, mental health with, um, so you're in those clinicals at the same time. And then in your senior year, you're taking med search two and you're taking another community rotation um, with that. So we get you through all different areas of nursing. So you get to kind of see things inpatient, outpatient, um, you know, lots of community settings. Um, and then along with you are in multiple clinicals sometimes all at once. Um, and I did want to touch on the venture grant. Um, somebody mentioned um, about taking that and then um, in focusing in nursing. So the venture grant is a really neat opportunity through, the, um, through ALMA. And a lot of the nursing students choose to use that in their spring term when we do Nursing 360, um, the community global experience. So for that class, you can go anywhere in the world, but any other um, nursing classes for the college, they do have to be done in ELMA. That's just um, coming, coming from our uh, governing body. Um, doesn't mean you can't sit for the state NCLEX outside of Michigan when you're done, but your clinicals, because we're accredited in Michigan, do have to be done there, um, except that Nursing 360. I see a question that says, would I be able to major in IPHS focusing on pre-physician assistant? and also minor in educational studies. Um, that is entirely possible. Um, if you're gonna do IPHS and, and go towards being a physician's assistant, we would probably recommend that you do the pre-medicine track within IPHS. That's typically what our pre-PA students will do. Um, PA is kind of interesting. Physician's assistants are those programs for PAs in graduate school actually have more stringent requirements than the programs for an MD or a DO. Um, from medical school for an MD or a DO, they generally will tell you two semesters of biology, um, two semesters of chemistry, a biochemistry course. So they do kind of general, just a number of semesters that you need. Um, PA programs will say you need to have general chemistry, you need to have cell biology, you need to have 
biochemistry and they tell you the exact courses. Um, so you do have to make sure that you meet those requirements. It's not that hard to meet those requirements if you know that's what you want to do and we'll help you through that. Um, PA programs also require a lot of hours um, of clinical service. So anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 hours of, of clinical work to apply for a program. And that's usually one of the trickier things for students to get done. Um, but again, if you know that's what you want to go into, there are some really great ways to get those hours. And we've had a lot of students go the CNA track and work at Masonic Pathways in Alma to get those hours in. We've had some students get um, certified to be an EMT and get hours that way. So really, they're getting those paid clinical hours to apply. Now, like I said, it's really not that difficult to finish the pre-PA track within your time at Alma, especially if you know that's what you want to do. And you will have a number of leftover credits that you can complete an educational studies minor um, with that. And we work closely with each other on campus. One of the nice things about being on a small campus is I feel like all the faculty know people in different departments. We work closely together. And so that's something where your faculty advisor, knowing you want to do educational studies, if your faculty advisor was an IPHS advisor, they could call someone in education and work with them to figure out exactly what classes that you need to get that minor done and when those classes would be offered so you don't miss the opportunity to take them. Yeah, I saw um, another question about, will I be required to be in scrubs? Um, so the first two years, no, there's no need to have scrubs. Um, our class color, our school color scrubs are gray with our Alma College nursing patch on the sleeve. We don't um, need those until the end of your sophomore year when you start that spring term. Um, and then anytime that you're in the hospital setting or in the simulation setting, you're most you're usually in scrubs. Um, other than that, you don't need to be in them. It's not a requirement. Although we actually have a lot of students that get scrubs for the IPHS department because, and this is actually a great time to bring this up, um, we are one of the few small institutions in Michigan that has a cadaver lab. So we do have cadavers that our students do dissect for that anatomy class. And both IPH students will take that course and like Allison said, nursing students are required to take anatomy and meet a specific grade to enter that nursing program. And because we have to keep those cadavers well preserved, it does smell strongly of formaldehyde in that lab. So a lot of students choose to get scrubs for the anatomy labs. So they don't have to worry about getting that smell on their own clothes or washing their own clothes over and over again because of that. Um, the other unique thing about that anatomy lab is that not only are we one of the only small schools that has a cadaver lab, but most of the small schools that have a lab and even the large schools that have a cadaver lab don't let their students do the hands-on dissections. Generally, a larger school is gonna have their medical students um, do the dissections and then undergrads, if they get that opportunity to go into the lab, will just get to see and study the dissections that are already done. And a lot of the smaller schools that have cadaver labs will order things already dissected. So they have prosected um, cadavers. We actually have our students do all of the dissections themselves. We guide them through that. We don't throw you in there and make you figure it out on your own. So we'll tell you exactly what you need to do to dissect it correctly. But that hands-on experience is very unique and it really allows our students to, to learn well. The best way to learn is by doing. So, I see another question about, do many students in IPHS double major with another program like chemistry or biology? You don't have to in order to get into a graduate program, um, but we do have students that will double major with chemistry or biology because they are taking a lot of chemistry or biology courses already for their graduate program. We actually have a lot of students, I think, that major in or double major with psychology. They'll take psychology courses for their um, graduate requirements, graduate school requirements, discover they love the psychology classes that they're taking. And I think the majority of students who I have double majoring end up double majoring IPHS psychology. I have had a handful of students who have been interested in 
going into medicine or going into therapy and know already that they want to open up their own private practice. And so I've had, I think, three now who have done a double major with business because they want to get a little bit of information about how to run a business, about the economy even, because you have to take some economics classes for your business major. And they do that because they're planning ahead. I see uh, you mentioned that you can get your degree in three years instead of four. Is, um, I don't know if that's to you, three, or if that's to me. I, oh, I, I, I think that? I did mention that um, because you can finish the IPHS degree in four years. Um, I have had some advisees come in in their freshman year and say they want to finish their degree in three years. If you know that when you enter, it's not necessarily easy if you decide that in your sophomore or junior year, but if you know that coming in as a freshman, then we can make sure that you finish that. Generally, we can make sure that you do that. So I had two this last year come in. They both said that they wanted to finish in three years and go on, one to OT school and one to PT school, so they knew what programs they wanted to do already. So what we did is we sat down day one when they came in and I was advising, and we mapped out exactly what the coursework would look like, what those semesters would look like, and when they would take those pre-graduate school exams like the GRE. Now, I will also mention that in order to do that, a typical student at Alma College will take about a 16 credit semester. Um, the students that came in and wanted to finish in three years, they had to take an 18 credit semester. And both of those students did come in with a couple um, credits, a couple classes worth of AP or IB credit. Um, but they were both able to plan out a three-year course plan. Now, if you were doing O or occupational therapy, so OT, and you wanted to do the 3-2 or the 3-3 program that I mentioned with Washington University, you don't need to take those extra credits each semester or come in with a bunch of AP or IB credits. Um, we have that lined up with Washington University, so you won't necessarily be done with your ALMA degree when you leave after three years, but by the time you finish your first year of coursework at Washington University for occupational therapy, you will get your ALMA degree because ALMA will count some of the coursework you do in your first year of graduate school towards your ALMA college degree. Now, we don't actually have a lot of students take advantage of that particular program. Um, I've had a couple students come in and say they want to, but then they get to ALMA college and they get into their junior year and they realize they want to stick around for their senior year. They really enjoy being on campus. They want to stick around with their friends. They don't want to jump into that graduate school experience just yet. Um, so we haven't had many in the last three years, which is how long I've been at Alma as a faculty member. <laughs> uh, so I do see what's your recommendation for a student who thinks they want to do something in the medical field, but they're not sure yet. So doctor, nurse, therapy, anything like that. Um, I can speak um, for this and you might want to jump in as well, but my recommendation would be to just, you know, focus on, getting those science classes done um, because most of them will overlap with anything that you want to do in the medical field. So, um, you know, working with your advisor to kind of create what that might look like, um, what classes you would need to kind of set you up for whatever pathway you end up taking. Um, and like I said, the, the sciences, we work close together with IPHS departments. So usually we can, mm -hmm. you know, work together and come up with something so that you're still on track and you're not, you know, wasting that year or, and you have some time to decide kind of what you think you want to do and what works best for you. Yeah. And like Allison mentioned earlier, um, some of the, the courses that you'll take for nursing in your first couple years are going to be biology, physiology, anatomy, pharmacology, pathophysiology. Um, physiology, anatomy, pharmacology, and pathophysiology, those four classes all count towards an IPHS degree as well. And so you don't necessarily have to choose if you're going nursing or IPHS at that particular point in time. Um, and within kind of the pre-health, doctor, PA, therapy, a lot of those courses will count towards any graduate school that you're planning on going towards. I actually had an advisee who came in two years ago 
was pretty sure she wanted to do physical therapy. And just this last semester, she switched into nursing and she was able to do it. We worked closely with the nursing department to figure out how she could do the nursing program and still finish on time. Now, she was able to do so because she had taken a lot of those science courses already that she would have needed to take for nursing anyway. And so she'd already gotten them complete and then was able to start working on those nursing classes. We also have, I will mention too, um, this is a new course, but a course called Health Careers. And it's a two credit course. It meets one day a week throughout the semester. And students who aren't really sure what they wanna do can take that course. And what they do is they bring different health professionals in to talk about their career. How did they get into the job that they're in? What do they do for their job? What do they like about their job? What are some things that um, people wouldn't normally think of to ask them that they wanna share with those students? And so that class is all about exploration learning about what's available as a career to you. That's interesting, Bree. I did not, I didn't know that. So thank you for sharing. Yeah. <laughs> it's very new. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Okay, I see one that just came in. I have not yet decided if I want to be a dermatologist or a dermatologist PA. So would I just do a pre-med track and decide later on? Um, I would say you have plenty of time to make that decision. I think first of all, you just have to decide between whether you want to do um, MD, DO, or PA. Because that's the first real decision you have to make when you're looking at graduate schools. Am I going towards a PA program or am I going towards medical school? In terms of your specific area within that field, within medicine or within PA um, school, you don't have to make that decision right away. Um, I know for medical school, you typically don't make that decision until the latter end of your four years of classes and clinicals at medical school. Um, in PA school, you get to do a lot of rotations that are gonna help you make that decision and you don't decide till the end. And so that specific area within an MD program or a PA program, you don't have to make that solid decision until you are in your graduate program and actually towards the end of your graduate program. Now for deciding between MD, DO, or PA, that's gonna be similar to making a decision between a lot of different pre-health fields. You would start out with those science courses that would count towards any program. And then as you get a little bit farther on, you can start narrowing down what you like about each career and which one you really wanna do. And I would strongly encourage, and your advisor will probably encourage you to do this too, to start doing some shadowing so you can actually get some experience in those or with those positions you can see what those individuals do to help you start making that decision okay i see one right here do you accept transfer credits in the iphs program from an undergraduate degree that's obtained elsewhere or that's already been obtained so that one's a little bit tricky um, Typically, it's hard to transfer credits that will count as IPHS credits. Um, the reason that we do that is because in the past, our, our physiology class has been very different from other schools. Now, that has recently changed. We used to do a two-semester physiology course that has now been combined into one semester. So I think that we are now being a little more lenient on people bringing those credits in, especially if they're coming in and trying to go into the nursing program. The anatomy class is a whole different story because of the fact I talked, or I, I told you that we have a unique experience for our anatomy class. We have that cadaver lab and our students do the dissections. There are not a lot of programs that are going to have that experience. And so we typically don't allow students to transfer those anatomy credits in. If they've had a class, an anatomy class where the coursework and the syllabus is similar to what we do in our, our anatomy class, we have had some students who will get the credits for the class, but then still have to take the lab so they get that hands-on dissection experience. But that class is harder to transfer credits in. Now, other classes that you will need 
For IPHS, for instance, general biology is a prerequisite. It's a course you have to take before you can take physiology. We have people who transfer general biology in. We also have students who transfer other course or other classes that are required for a graduate program, like chemistry courses, general chemistry, organic chemistry, inorganic chemistries. Um, and they can transfer those in and then they have some of the other courseworks and the other classes that are going to be required for their graduate program completed. Uh, all of that is kind of on a case-by-case -case basis. And so those transfer credits have to be approved by the registrar's office and by the department chair, who would be Dr. Ball for our department. I see another one. Can I see a question right here? What classes does a pre-med student get at Alma College? So pre-med, um, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, is a little more general in terms of the classes that they're going to require. They are going to want two semesters of biology. They are going to want two semesters of chemistry. Um, typically, students will take biochemistry. Biochemistry is not required for all medical programs, but biochemistry is on the MCAT. So a lot of students will end up taking five semesters of chemistry, um, general chemistry, organic one, organic two, inorganic, and then that biochemistry just to help prepare them for taking the MCAT after their junior or senior year. Um, they'll take some sociology, typically at least one semester in sociology, and sociology is on the MCAT. And they'll take some psychology because psychology is on the MCAT as well. Um, our pre-med students will take physiology and anatomy. Usually there will be physiology and anatomy classes required for medical schools and information about those courses on the MCAT. And so if any student who's doing pre-med, your advisor is going to work with you to figure out what those classes are that are required and what those classes are that are going to help prepare you best for taking the MCAT so you can be successful on getting a good MCAT score and applying for graduate school. Now, because medical schools keep their requirements so open and leave it to just two semesters of biology and you can take cell biology or microbiology or immunology, whatever second biology course you want to. Because they keep it so general and their requirements aren't as vast as something like a PA school, um, pre-med actually has a, a wide variety of majors that will apply to a program. You do not have to major in IPHS to go into pre-med. We have a pre-med track in IPHS and we have students that go that route, but it's actually recommended that you major in what you're most passionate about. Because um, what you're most passionate about is gonna show in your personal statements. Um, it's gonna be an area that you probably perform better in because you really truly enjoy the, cl the classes. And medical schools usually value um, someone who not only can show their passion, but maybe approach a question from a different angle. And so if you like history, you can major in history. As long as you get the prereqs for that medical program, you can have a history major and take the MCAT and go to medical school. I have two friends from when I was in a graduate program who were in a medical program, and one was a history major and one was an English major. I've known people who have been really interested in dance and want to be a dance major and go on to medical school. So if you're thinking pre-med, either MD or DO, I would suggest that you really major in the major that you find the most fascinating, that you really love the classes and you want to be in those classes and take them. And your advisor will help make sure that you get all those other prerequisites that you need for graduate school. And then you can focus on some classes that you really love as well. I saw a question about what's your favorite class to teach. Um, I will just say that um, mine is anything in the skills simulation lab. Um, so we have a nursing skills class. Um, I'm not the primary uh, faculty member for that, but I do assist with that class. Um, and that is probably one of my, my favorite because it is a time that the students really pull together the skills that they're going to take with them into the clinical setting. Um, along with that, um, anytime after every, at the end of every semester, we come into the simulation lab and um, we run different patient scenarios. And that, you know, that would be one of my favorite times as well, just because a lot of times the students, that's at the end of the semester when they're really, that light bulb is going off and they're really putting things together. 
um, and that focus of nursing that we're talking about. So, um, you know, I'm not with them on the clinical floor all the time. So it's nice to see them come into the lab and, you know, I get to see them progress over time. And then if, as, you know, we, they do their um, senior simulation, we, I get to really see how much they've changed, you know, over the, over the course of the program. And that's when it's really rewarding. And it, it's, I, it, it makes me proud of the students, you know, they put the, the hard work in and, um, you know, everything just kind of comes together for them. So I would say that's anytime we're in the simulation lab, that's my favorite class to teach. <laughs> That's a hard question in general. I, I just love teaching. I, I love being in the classroom with everybody. I'm sure Allison feels the same way. Um, I would have to narrow it down to two. I really love human physiology. I'm just fascinated by how the human body works, how it functions, and every organ system functions a different way. And so I love studying the individual organs and then kind of piecing them together and connecting them because they all work together too. Um, I also teach an upper level muscle physiology course. And so we look at the differences between skeletal muscle, which is the muscle that most people think about. It's what moves you around, your biceps, your triceps, your quadriceps. And then how that compares to cardiac muscles, so the muscle that pumps your heart, and smooth muscles, so the muscles that are in your vessels or in your digestive tract. So we look at how they differ in terms of function. And then one of the things I really, truly love about that class is within the lab for muscle physiology, we actually, I have the students culture their own skeletal muscle cells. And so we learn how to culture those cells, how to keep them alive at the beginning part of the semester. And then they actually get to come up with their own projects, their own experiments on what they want to do to those cells and how they want to evaluate them to test a question. So I've had students who put caffeine on their muscle cells before and see how that caffeine affects um, cell growth or cell function. Um, I had some students put protein powders on them before. I've had some students last year who actually did a high lipid media because they were trying to simulate what happens if lipids within your plasma go up. So maybe if you had high cholesterol levels and how that would affect skeletal muscle growth. And so it's always fascinating to see what the students come up with in terms of their experiments and then the results that they're, they're getting as they do that. Um, I did see a question about how did you arrive at your specialization? Um, what are some factors that you considered? So I started out um, on an inpatient um, uh, rehab floor. Um, so it was, you know, ma mainly patients that were recovering from, um, you know, C uh, strokes, post-MIs, um, anything orthopedic. They were coming there for a little bit of more medical assistance um, along with that PT, OT help. Um, I, I really enjoyed that. It was a good area for me to get started um, and kind of utilize the skills that I had learned in nursing school. But ultimately, my um, goal was to become an OB nurse. And um, shortly after I started nursing, about three years later, I went to the OB floor. Um, and honestly, it was way different than I ever imagined, different than it was in nursing school with clinical. But it was I still um, practice actually on, on the OB floor and it is one of the most rewarding jobs I've ever had in my entire life. Um, but I guess how I chose that was it was just something I was really interested in, um, you know, caring for those moms, caring for those babies at a very vulnerable time in their life. And um, I, I enjoy it. And I think that's the most important thing is you really have to enjoy it um, before you're going to, you know, put your all into it. and and everything and, and make an impact for your patient. Um, so that's one nice thing about going through the nursing program is you get to see all those different areas. You know, maybe you're not interested in being in the inpatient setting. Maybe you want to be a, a, you know, a community health nurse or, um, you know, or education. I never dreamed I would be in education. I was going to be an OB nurse the rest of my life. But, um, you know, there's just so many rewarding opportunities in nursing and there's so many things that you can do. Um, but most importantly, you just have to really focus on what's important to you and what you enjoy, um, and then you'll make an impact in that patient's life. I see a question about whether or not intro to psychology is required to graduate with an IPHS major. It's not required. So it's not one of the required classes in any of our five tracks within IPHS. However, I will also mention that a lot of graduate schools 
for health programs, physical therapy, occupational therapy, um, are going to require, at the very least, one psychology class. Occupational therapy actually requires more. Typically for occupational therapy, you'll see programs asking you to do intro to psychology, um, abnormal psychology, maybe physiological psychology. Um, for PT schools, you will generally see them ask for two to three psychology courses. And then like I mentioned, the MCAT, if you're going on to medical school, will have some psychology on it, and medical schools will typically require um, a psychology course or two. Um, we have all of those prerequisite courses for health programs, and this is actually another great thing to bring up too. We have all those prerequisites mapped out for MD school, for DO school, for um, mm -hmm. if you want to go into pharmacy, for PTOT, because we now have a pre-health professions committee on campus made up of a handful of faculty on campus. And those faculty are responsible for reaching out to schools across Michigan and some of the schools that some of our students go to outside of Michigan and figuring out what exactly their requirements are, what are the things that they look for the most in an application, they value the most in an application, what are the number of hours that they want the students to have in terms of clinical experience. What are the exam scores they want for the GRE and the MCAT? And we've mapped all that out. We're getting ready to kind of circulate that to the faculty across campus so all faculty advisors will have that information. And we also are now doing check-ins with students as they go through their Alma College experience. So we check in with the freshmen, with the sophomores, with the juniors, and with the seniors. Um, this last year we held a workshop on writing personal statements. Um, we had some faculty members from programs um, come and speak to students. We typically will have uh, Clint, who is the admissions director for the PT and PA programs at CMU, come and talk to the students. We also are there in place and as in part to go over applications and make sure they're ready to be submitted to graduate schools. So before anybody applies to a graduate program, they'll actually submit their application to the Pre-Health Professions Committee on Alma's campus. And that committee will either choose to write a committee letter showing that they're giving that application support, or they will give the student feedback on what they need to do in the next year to apply for graduate school and get that committee support later on if it's not quite there, they're not quite ready to apply. So we're really there as a resource for all students that are going towards a pre-health track or planning on applying to a health program in a graduate school. With the exception of nursing. Nursing students don't have to go through the pre-health professions committee. They work hand in hand with the nursing department. <laughs> Yeah, and we also have something very similar um, that Brie was talking about, like a course layout. Um, I'm happy to, you know, distribute that to anybody. It kind of gives a breakdown year by year of what classes um, we would recommend to kind of stay on the right track. Um, that's also can be found at um, the alma.edu website. If you search nursing, um, that layout is also on there. So that's kind of a good guide as well. Um, I did see a question about can freshmen get clinical experience. Um, we don't do actual clinicals with the freshmen. Um, the only nursing class that there is is the um, nursing seminar, and that's not a hands-on class. That's kind of just introducing nursing, um, you know, communication, um, talking about very basic things, um, just so we can start working to that point of when um, students will get into the clinical in the clinical setting. So as a freshman, no. Um, as a sophomore, we do run a simulation. So you get into the sim lab. Um, it's very basic. It's all on communication. It's not on patient care. Um, but it does give you that opportunity to work with um, the, you know, as with your peers and then also just get into the, to the lab so that you kind of begin to get comfortable and also just working on, you know, communication, bedside, bedside manner. I mean, that's, that can also be intimidating once you start nursing. So just very simple. Um, and then again, that clinical experience actually starts your, uh, the fall of your junior year. Anything else, Bree? I don't think so. Okay. I think we covered a 
all the questions. Does anyone have any more questions before we kind of wrap things up? All right. Well, everybody stay safe and stay healthy. Thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you.